Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Crisis on Infinite Earths. Today, we're going to be doing my review for part 3 of the crossover, aka the mid-season finale for Crisis, because Crisis is returning in January for its final two episodes, and right now we've seen three, and I would say episode one was amazing, episode three was amazing, I thought episode two last night on Batwoman was like, pretty good i would say it's like a 8.5 out of 10 but then these two episodes episode one and episode three have been 10 out of 10s i absolutely love tonight's episode on the flash it really was brilliant so we got a lot of stuff to talk about in this video so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any dc tv videos later this year all right so we need to talk about all of this i've got literally like three pages of notes gotta try and get through most of it and talk about what's happened because it's so much that happens in this episode and I'm talking massive stuff leading towards Arrow's next episode and Legends next episode in January. Okay so let's start with how it opens and I actually missed the opening so I had to go back and watch it because it's kind of late here in the UK in London and I just kind of fell asleep which is my bad because I missed like the first five minutes but then I woke up and I was like oh shit crisis is on I need to watch this so that's why I've been making these videos in the evening because you know I've been trying to stay up to watch it for you guys and review it for you guys so anyway I went back and I watched the opening and it was really great so we start off on earth 203 and so we get the birds of prey essentially which is a callback to the birds of prey TV show that was on for a while and so we have Barbara on the comms, so Oracle, which is obviously, again, a shout out to the Birds of Prey show, but also kind of to Felicity because they were debating whether to call her Oracle or not at a certain point in the past. And so we see Huntress. Obviously, this is the version from the Birds of Prey TV show, same actress. So it's really great to see this. It's New Gotham, as they call it. And so their Earth is destroyed, and this is how the episode starts. So it's a nice, very short cameo. And this leads into the next bit with Ray creating the Paragon Detector and they figure out a way to use it and it properly works. And because this is the Flash's episode, we had a lot of Flash characters showing up. So like Killer Frost, Ralph had some stuff, Iris had quite a lot of stuff in this episode. And I really enjoyed that. I really love seeing Team Flash so involved. I thought definitely was the best involvement of all the characters out of all these episodes. This episode didn't feel rushed. I felt like last episode didn't have enough going on. And I felt like the first episode maybe it was a little bit more rushed. Although I absolutely love the first episode. It was like a lot of fight scenes basically the first episode because you know that was when the attack first happened so that makes sense so i just thought this episode really really worked well on its own and so we have like ralph getting his first crossover very funny line from killer frost and so we have everyone from earth 38 by the end of this episode and this is how they start it they say oh we've got them all on earth one they're all safe we're gonna go out we're gonna save some more people from other earths and bring them to earth one but by the end of the episode earth one is destroyed spoiler alert and we'll get back to that later in this video but they're all dead so it doesn't matter that they saved everyone from Earth 38 Oliver's sacrifice didn't matter and doesn't matter as of right now but obviously with the way they end the episode maybe it will matter but anyway so the Paragon detector ends up working and they find out that Martian Manhunter is the Paragon of Honor they find out the Flash Barry Allen is the Paragon of Love and they find out that a new person, Ryan Troy, who is the Atom in the comics, is the Paragon of Humanity. I thought that was kind of random how they introduced him. And also, I don't think the actor was like the best actor. I felt like he was being outacted by Candace Patton. That's just the impression I got in those scenes because it was heavily to do with those two. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of him and I want to see his involvement. Obviously, we didn't get too much of him in this episode. But maybe it was just because Candace was really good in this episode because she had a lot of time compared to the other episodes. And so we have Diggle showing up for the first time in the crossover. So he's fighting against Sarah over not being told about what was happening with Crisis and what was happening with Oliver. Because he was very much so in the dark. He wasn't even there when Oliver died. So he has the right to be angry and yeah. So we have the Anti-Monitor manipulating Pariah. This is revealed as to, you know, how 
Nash actually became pariah and you know he is to bear witness to all these tragedies that is his role and so we're reminded that he's not just there like out of his own needs but he's actually being controlled by the anti-monitor to witness all these events so that's where we have Cisco and Team Flash like I said it's great seeing them all together and so they break into the place where Briar was sucked into just as the crisis began and so they get in it's like a proper headquarters and everything and that is where we meet some new people and some interesting stuff happens which we'll get to later as we go on into the review so we have this Kara and Kate stuff happening in the episode as Kara tries to change destiny also we have Lex along with them at the start of the episode and he explains it may turn Kara mad if she uses the book of destiny to try to save Earth 38 so this Kate and Kara stuff was my least favorite part about the episode I generally like them together I think they're very good together but it was definitely the one part of the story where it felt like it was being a bit forced in because compared to the other stuff that was happening it was very very slow it was chopped up throughout the episode maybe it was the editing but it was chopped up throughout the episode with literally so you know the episodes are like 45 minutes or something like that and i would say like every 10 minutes we go back to it and it's just not very impactful compared to some of the other stuff so I just don't think it mattered that much and it was just prolonged too long. Alright, so we have Diggle, Constantine and Mia. They're all together and they go out on a mission, right, to try and save Oliver. And they open a door and who do they see? They see fucking Lucifer. I don't watch Lucifer, but I got hyped. His cameo was a great cameo. I absolutely adored it. I thought it was hilarious. And I thought it was just a perfect scene to have. And, you know, the fact that he knows Constantine makes so much sense. And so it was just really nice seeing Lucifer show up. And that was a very much so a holy shit moment. Like a few moments we've had this crossover. And he's the devil. And it's a hilarious scene. And it really works. And I love what happened there. Okay. So let's move on. So Earth 1. We go back to Earth 1. And we have Barry, Iris, and Caitlin trying to break in and stop the anti-monitor and they get in eventually to this place where we talked about and so the nexus between our worlds is where they are and so earth 90 flash is trapped on the cosmic treadmill and so it's said that the speed of him running is used to generate the antimatter cannon which was introduced in this episode and it's apparently you know part of the reason why earth 2 was destroyed as a test and they reference Harry and Jesse. So it seems like they're actually dead. And it seems like everyone's dead apart from our heroes at the end of the episode who survive for certain. So there's barely anyone alive. All the universe, all the multiverse Earths have been destroyed and everything in the multiverse. You know, soon there's only going to be the antimatter universe, which we haven't seen yet. But it seems like right now they're going crazy with the killing. They're going crazy with everyone being taken away. And... I feel like they're not going to continue along how Crisis goes in the comics, because in the comics, yeah, Earths get destroyed and everything, but it's pretty permanent, and I don't know how permanent this crossover is going to be, because everything has been destroyed, there's only a few so heroes left who are actually alive right now by the end of this episode, and I feel like they're going to reverse them. Obviously, they have the Book of Destiny with Lex Luthor by the end of the episode, so they can rewrite Destiny if they want. So, I don't know how permanent it's going to be towards the end of the crossover. There's definitely going to be some people that remain dead, and there's going to be some Earths that remain gone, but I do think it's going to be a bit less permanent than the comics, which maybe is a little bit of a shame, but you know, it's the TV show, so let's go ahead and talk about some more stuff so we have Barry who is with the Earth 90s Flash he gets him off the treadmill and they talk together and we have the antimatter cannon as it backfires and at that same time we got the introduction of Ryan Troy who plays a role obviously to do with the Paragons because he is one of them so we get the Iris West scene with him and like I said Iris is great in this episode I really loved her I thought Candace does a great job throughout and there were some great moments also Ralph was there and at that point it said that seven Earths are left and the Monitor's world apparently died as he talks to Lois Lane explains a little bit of what happened to him and his history so there is some sort of connection there and so there were other worlds right and so we have Kingdom Come Superman he returns 
he fails to save another Earth. He is extremely annoyed and pissed off that he couldn't save them because, you know, he is, like, the definition of a superhero, really, when you look at it. So he's never going to give up, right? And so at that same point, we have the introduction of Black Lightning and... I haven't watched Black Lightning in a long while, right? But same thing with Lucifer. I got so hyped when he showed up. I was like, this is the bomb. This is what I want to see. So he shows up. He's confirmed to be from another Earth. And so his Earth has been destroyed, as you saw in the last few scenes of Black Lightning in his episode. And so, yeah, his family's dead. His Earth is gone. And this drives his anger and his sort of passion throughout this episode. And I thought Black Lightning was a great addition. Really really great stuff between him and especially the Flash. But then at that same point, like I said, we got this Kara stuff with Kate and basically Kate's trying to stop her. And like I said, it happens like every 10 minutes or so they pop up and it's not very important to be honest. And that's just a little bit of like chit chatter. And we have Barry and Earth 90 Flash, they go into Flash time. And so he references Tina, his old wife, who obviously is not around anymore, which is a reference to the 90s Flash TV show, which we'll get back to later because there is a great moment that we need to talk about. And so we see the bigger picture, right? So Barry and Earth 90 Flash and Barry thinks he's going to disappear. He has to run on this treadmill to actually, you know, save the universe. But a twist happens and we'll get to that in a minute. And at the same time, like I said, there's a lot of stuff happening in this episode, so this review is me jumping back and forth between these different iterations. We're pretty much going in chronological order, so it's easy for you guys to understand, because there is so much to talk about in this episode. So we have Lian Yu, and Oliver is there, and he attacks Diggle, and they're able to get to him, right? And so Diggle is obviously kind of still pissed off that he wasn't here during Crisis, but he's here for his best friend now and so he finds some humanity in Oliver and they are able to control him a bit. It seems like Constantine didn't need to do whatever he meant to do. So Oliver's pretty fine now, which is obviously maybe a bit of a retcon from last episode or the episode before, sorry, because he died, but he's back and we were all expecting that and this is just the way that it went and I'm pretty satisfied with the way that it went. And yeah, so every Earth is destroyed. Only Earth 1 remains. No Earths are going to be merging. And that's a big thing in Crisis in the comics. Earths merge. But it seems like in the crossover, or at least for now, all these Earths have been destroyed. There is no Earths left by the end of the episode, including Earth 1 which is destroyed. So I don't know, what are they going to do? We'll have to wait and see. So Barry and Iris, they say their goodbyes and we have this really touching moment between them as they flash back or Barry flashes back later in the episode thinking about their last goodbye and it's really touching. Like I said, I love this episode, especially for the touching moments between Barry and Iris and there are a few other ones including the Earth 90s flash as he dies because we need to talk about that right now because Barry from Earth-90 sacrifices himself instead of Barry Allen, our normal version, because he feels like he has to do it. And so we get a flashback to the 90s Flash TV show. We see a younger version of Barry Allen from Earth-90 and Tina. And wow, this moment really hit me. And it was really sort of inspired and a very hard-hitting moment as he sacrifices himself. You can't help but root for him in his heroics and so it's confirmed obviously this is canon with the TV show and I just thought it was just a perfect way for him to go out so he does die and quite frankly it was spine tingling you sort of got shivers up your back because it was such a great moment okay so now we move on we go back to Lian Yu we have the Spectre showing up and I like John's reference of being like oh this is not the Spectre or Jim Corrigan that I know which I love because obviously this is just a short little cameo from the Spectre. I don't know if he's going to come back next episode or anything like that. But he has a role to play or at least Oliver has a role to play in regards to the Spectre. Because the theory is and I would say it's pretty likely because he recruited Oliver. Oliver may become the Spectre and that may be his role for the rest of the crossover. But anyway so you guys know I'm a big fan of the Constantine TV show so I was obviously kind of lukewarm on them bringing the Spectre in 
and I think the fact that John actually referenced that there is another Spectre out there, that sort of settled my nerves because I really love the version of Jim Corrigan they had on Constantine. So hopefully, you know, once everything's back to normal after Crisis, maybe if Constantine ever sort of gets his own show again or anything like that, or on Legends, we get to see those old characters, which would be great. Okay, so is Oliver going to be the Spectre? That is the big question. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about that. And so let's move on. So we've got the Flash and Black Lightning finally together. And they talk together and they talk about, you know, their sacrifices and their memory. And how they should honour their memories. And they must confront their rage and use it to dig inside of them. And I love they use the interstellar quote. I think the interstellar quote is actually from a real poem. But it goes like this. And rage against the dying of the light, which I thought was a really, really clever line. Obviously, they took from Interstellar probably more likely than the poem, or it could be from the poem where they took it from, but, you know, I'm, like, the biggest Interstellar fan, so that's where I'm saying they got it from. But that was a really great moment between Barry and Jefferson as they shine as heroes. I really think those two were brilliant in this episode, along with the Flash's stuff that was going on with Iris as well. And then at the same time, we still got Batwoman and Supergirl talking while all this madness is going on. And as I'm talking about it in the review, I'm popping this up like every like five minutes or so. Because it just keeps on popping up in the episode and nothing is happening with it. It's just the same old thing. And that's the only problem with the episode, in my opinion, because it just kind of staggers the pace of it, because it's literally within a certain minute span. It could have literally been like a five minute scene or like a four minute scene or not even that. And it could have been over. So I just felt like they dragged out throughout the whole episode. OK, so let's move on to some better stuff. We have Barry, he's still alive, he sees the love of his life again, Iris West, he's always going to be running back home to her. I thought that moment was absolutely brilliant, I really loved it. And also earlier, when Barry said his goodbyes and he just talks about like running home to her, I was like, yes Barry, you better come home. And I love the fact that they always reference a musical crossover with running home to you. And that song he sung to Iris as he proposed to her because that is one of the best moments on The Flash. The musical episode is my favourite episode of DC TV, so obviously it has a place in my heart whenever they mention something to do with that. Okay, so we have all this stuff going on, and as we head towards the end of the episode, Lila returns, but she's actually been taken over by the Anti Monitor. And she basically attacks everyone and everyone tries to attack her. She basically renders them all useless. And this is at the point when the monitor says this line to Pariah. He says, the fate of all of humanity lies with Pariah. So at that moment, I was like, holy shit, what's Pariah going to do? Because, you know, he's stuck here. He's under the control of the anti-monitor. But obviously the anti-monitor doesn't control him, but he's just like places him to witness all these tragedies. So we have all of that and Earth 1 gets destroyed. No Earths are remaining. What the hell just happened? And at that point I was like, what the hell did Pariah just do? Because he shoots out like beams of light. Everyone disappears. Not everyone, but wow. Seriously, by this point, my hype levels were just overloading because it was just pure excitement. Like, what the f is happening? Like, what's going to happen next? Sorry if I keep on swearing. I know some of you complain about that, but that's just my excitement getting the better hold of me. And I'm sorry for that. But anyway, so let's get back on track. So they're sent to the vanishing point. Sarah recognizes it. We've seen it on Legends of Tomorrow before, so it's nice to return to a familiar place. So it's out of time and space so therefore they're not actually burdened by the anti-monitor and the antimatter wave because they're out of space and time so they're fine for now and it's only a certain amount of heroes that Pariah got out of there and so it's at that point where we see Superman being killed or we think he's being killed but it's actually the Book of Destiny changing and it's Lex Luthor it turns out so it's not that version of Superman don't know where he is but the Kingdom Come version of Superman is great, by the way. I really love Brandon Ralph as him. And so it seems like the way they ended the episode and they ended with this cliffhanger, you know, every Earth has been destroyed. What are they going to do? Seems like they're going to rewrite Destiny through Lex Luthor. And this was the cliffhanger. So at that point, Iris West, 
Superman and all the other people on the ship, they all died. So the stakes are higher than ever as we head in towards Arrow's episode and Legends of Tomorrow's episode of the crossover in January. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This has been a very long video. This is over 20 minutes long. I barely ever make a 20 minute long video. I don't remember the last time I have, but there was simply so much to talk about in this episode. I love this episode. It's a 10 out of 10, even if I wasn't so keen on the Kate and Kara stuff, which is very surprising because normally I like them, but it was just, you know, the fact that they dragged it on. Like, it could have been just one scene in the episode, but they kept on repeating it every 10 minutes or so. But anyway, it was a great episode. Can't wait for what's going to happen next. Obviously, I'll have a trailer breakdown out for the next episode of Crisis on Infinite Earths, which will be happening after the mid-season break. During the mid-season break, we're going to still be making videos. Please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers. We are only a few hundred subscribers away, so please be sure to do that if you're new to the channel. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see room.